Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek but I am Penge and welcome back to Crossroads Inn and of course welcome back to the Tankard and Teapot where last time out we went along with Callister's plan which was to try and move the war away from us a little bit. We were a little bit too close to the front lines of war and she has a plan where she wants to get the Merchants Guild involved but the Merchants would not come down to us because they were afraid that they would get caught up in all of the fighting. So we hatched a plan which was to send an adventurer to a camp to the north which was an Untamarkian camp of elite soldiers and the plan would be to wipe them out which means that we could then move the Yorvale forces forward a bit which means that we here in our inn were not quite so much on the front lines and we did that although it didn't go exactly as planned there are a couple of strange things that happened with that plan um, number one we were told to hire an adventurer so we did we got you in believe you're still there there you go so we got Kobe in so you know he's wearing an animal skin he's kind of all angry looking he's got a good old sort of uh, you know an adventurer kind of face we sent him in because he's an adventurer and um he was terrible he was really awful <laughs> he could not get past some drunk guards which I mean that's not very good do not put that on your CV Kobe do not put that on your resume that's not a good thing so um Kobe failed at the first hurdle he arrived at this camp there were some drunk guards he couldn't get past the drunk guards I don't know what happened and he came home in relative disgrace I, it wasn't very impressive really so failing that we then sent this chap in we sent Golden Vico in who is a bard so he plays music. So this guy, rugged, surly adventurer, girl, I've got an adventurous kind of face and I'm wearing an animal. Um, no, he couldn't do it. Bard guy just here, just walked it. Went in and dealt with, I think there were some uh, elite guards. There was a giant kind of, there was a big brute or something and the drunk guards as well. So he dealt with all of them, came back absolutely gloriously triumphant. Um, and then we got a message from Lord Commander, no Lord Commander, Lady Commander. Um, and it was a little bit confusing because I suspect that that bit glitched because we had a choice. If we go to the map, we had a choice of either attacking the camp, which was up here, which we did, or going over and attacking the eastern outpost. And that was what Gannis asked us to do, but we didn't want to do that because I don't really like Gannis. So we went up here and dealt with this camp here. Yet when Lady Commander came to talk to us, she said, somebody's attacked the eastern outpost. Oh my goodness me, I'm not very happy about that. So um, yeah, I think that bit might have glitched out a tiny bit, but never mind. Whatever the case, the overall outcome is that the war has moved away from us, which is good, which means that we can get the merchants in. If we now click on this and have a look at what our current objectives are, we need to establish a trade route with Dutral, which we've done. We did that absolutely ages ago, I think, and establish a trade route with Ore, which is the capital of Yorvale. Now, Ore is quite some distance away. If we go and look on the map, Ore is all the way up there. We don't even have a little sort of dotty path to it yet. So we do need to try and increase relations with it. And what I'm thinking is, We've got 35 of these political gossip scrolls. Why don't we just spend 10 of them? Because, you know, that still leaves us with 25 of them just sort of sitting around. We'll go 5 and 10. And that increases our influence up by 20 a time. So we've got 43% influence with them now, which is very, very good. So that's a nice start. And yeah, we've got these scrolls for this reason, so we might as well use them. Um, also, can we do some town crying? Yes, absolutely. So let's get ourselves, while we're here, we might as well have a bit of this. Um... How about 19 people for three days for 390 monies? Ivor. Let's get Ivor to yell about us. There you go, Ivor. That's your job. So hopefully that will increase the influence as well, which is quite a good thing. Um, other stuff that we did around the place, we kind of just sort of, we sorted the staffing out and we sorted out some of the lights and all that kind of stuff. We did get some extra tables in and these seem very, very popular. So these are tables with chairs, not tables with benches. These are tables with chairs. They seem very, very popular. It's quite good. And also the um, the bard is facing that way. <laughs> I don't quite know why the bard faces, you know, there's a big crowd of people here. Look that way. But there we go. So we got those in. And I think as time sort of goes on in this part, we'll try and add some more of those things. And um, we're going to do a couple of things now. One thing I'm going to address, and a few people in the comments have said, you need to put in a gambling den type thing. And you can build such a thing, a game room. So you can put a gaming room in. The only thing is that we haven't actually unlocked the option in here to uh, put anything in a gaming room. So we could zone one out, but we don't have this here. 
unlocks a gambling table. We've not unlocked that because we're in the um, we're in the campaign mode. We're not in sandbox mode. So we've got to unlock these as we play the campaign. So we need to get this done first. We need to unlock the uh, nobles guest type, and then we could unlock a gambling table. Because otherwise, that gambling room is going to be pretty useless. It's going to be a very empty, slightly boring room. So um, until we've actually got this unlocked and we can get the gambling table, there's no point putting a sort of gambling gaming room in because it's just not going to do anything. It's going to be a waste of time. So um, we won't do that quite yet. Although when we get to that point, yes, we will put that in. And another thing that we're going to look at is we're going to sort out this hole that's in the side of the, uh, in the, side of the uh, building because we've got a staircase that goes up. But the, um, the staircase, it's kind of open. It's an open sort of thing right now. And it looks a little bit odd. So yeah, look, the staircase, there's kind of a, there's a bit of, uh, bit of in there and a bit of in here, but this bit is entirely open to the elements. But it can be easily rectified. So we should do that now. And all you need to do, we just need to build some more empty room just there and just there. And lo and behold, tis done. So there we go. So actually, do you know what? Let's move time on until they get this constructed. Oh, hello, Martin. Nice to see you. Nice to see you've got your chef whites on still. Blinking soldiers. Again, they are causing trouble in the inn. And it's been so peaceful for a while. By the way, there's a strange letter waiting for you. Okay, who is it from? No idea, my boy. I don't even know where it got here. I've just found it on the counter. Okay, is it addressed specifically to me? Well, yes and no, I guess. It's addressed to the future King of Yorvale. Pretty strange, wouldn't you say? Yes, show me the letter, please. To the future King of Yorvale. Hail, I am marking here the most important and fragile strategic points on the Yorvale Untermark border. Do this knowledge as you see fit, your humble servant. P.S. When I learn something new, I shall let you know immediately. <gasps> oh, somebody knows who I am and they're giving me strategic secrets. Okay, so a list of the most important and fragile strategic points on the Yorvale Untermark border. Why would someone send us this? Should we use it? This mysterious person apparently knows our secret. Do you think it's the seer? Well, she'd just come and tell us, wouldn't she? What do you make of it? Or we can use this information to get the soldiers away from the inn. Um, let's do this. Let's say, why would someone send us this? Maybe they want you to influence the course of war. Okay, should we do that? Well, that's the age-old question of morals versus pragmatism. Um, okay, I, I'm gonna. Do you think it's the seer? I don't think it is because she would just tell us. So I think that's a silly question. What do you make of all this, my boy? This all feels like playing with fire. Then again, you've already done that a few times and it's been fine, except for that literal rock breeze fire. Still, the soldiers are really getting on my nerves. Okay, I need to think about this. I want them to finish that. Oh, crikey's hello, Callister. Greetings, Owen's child. I see the trade route to Ori is yet to be created. I'm on it, all right? It takes time. It's not magic. Um, I've come across some new information which might change the course of the war. Yeah, let's tell her about this. I see. I fear changing the course of the war is too ambitious based off of this. But if you so desire, sending adventurers to those locations might prove useful. Keeping the front lines as far from the inn as possible is most beneficial for us. Sounds like something worth considering. Okay, so hang on. I want to get this finished. Can we please see this bit done? Come on, I just want to make sure this bit of the inn is done. Hooray! Okay, there we go. So yes, look, it's inside. Now, can we have little... Are there little railings anywhere? Can we get some tiny railings? I'd love there to be some railings around the edge. There, 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 there. A banister. Yes, absolutely right. Can we put some banisters around the place, please? Because otherwise people are going to fall down there and that's going to be quite bad. So um, uh, there we go, look, like that. That's, that's spot on. That is absolutely spot on. So there we go. Look, oh, that looks quite good. That looks quite good. And it's inside now. So hooray. <laughs> so it sort of looks good again. Okay, so that's that done. What is that? A bathtub? <gasps> We've unlocked a bath. A must have for any noble lady and gentleman and a should have for everyone else anyway. When did we unlock a bath? I don't remember unlocking a bathtub at all. Oh, that's brilliant. Um... And there are only 250 monies. Oh, this is this is marvellous news. Okay, can we put bathtubs in everyone's rooms? Can we just put bathtubs in all of the rooms? Um, this is a little bit worrying. Who's talking to the seer? Do we need to be concerned about this? Right, we'll come back and put bathtubs in when we've got a little bit more money. Um, okay, right. So what was this thing about the points on the map then? Where are the strategic weak areas? Does it tell us? 
Does it tell us at all? I'm not entirely sure it's telling us anything that we didn't already know. There's places around the place and we can go to them. Where are the alleged strategic points of interest? Okay, maybe that's not done its thing yet. I'm not entirely sure what we're supposed to do with that. Okay, never mind. Right, let's move time on. Let's see what happens next. So in terms of story, yeah, we're still just doing this. We still just need to um, get Ore on our side. So it was 43, was it? It's gone up to 46. Do you know what? Let's spend another bunch of those scrolls because we don't do anything with them other than this. We can unlock traits. But we don't really use them. So um, yeah, we might as well get that going up. So it's 66. Um, it also means, oh, there you go. Onion soup. Let's pay to learn onion soup. Yay, lovely onion soup. Um, also now, can we send somebody up here to get whatever that item is? What was it again? What was the item here? Um, I guess it, it was a bench of some sort, wasn't it? It was a, what, what is it? So let's have a look. A Yorvale counter. A counter adorned with the national colours of Yorvale, the Green Kingdom. Eduardo, you can go on another long walk, my good sir. Go and pick that thing up. And can we get the recipe as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, now this is what we need to do. Eggs poached in a sauce. Not really defining what the sauce is. It's just eggs poached in a sauce. Okay. <laughs> a generic sauce. Um, Morgan, you can go and have a walk up there, please. Absolutely. Oh dear, some more poor people who have been affected by the war. Yes, you can take whatever you like. Garin's fame rises. That is marvellous. I'm going to save quite a lot of those points. We've got eight points available because we'll have to unlock this. So I want to unlock that. Then we'll unlock that. Then we'll unlock that. So that's three already down here. So we'll get nobles. We'll get the gambling tables. We'll get vedettas. Oh my goodness me. All that kind of stuff will be going on, will it? But then we can start branching out into these bits. So um, better quality workers, that could be really useful. Increases the amount of money people are willing to pay for food and drinks. That's brilliant. That's kind of essential. Um, better quality workers. So we get two of those. So yeah, we've got eight points. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's already six there. And we've still got some left. Then we get that, unlocks more land. And then we could get whatever. We could unlock garlic or we could do all these different things. Get uh, yeah, bees. We get bees. Honey and wax. Oh, that's very exciting. We can make our own mead. We could make a candle. Ah, now if we get bees, we get a candle maker. We can make our own candles. That'll save us a pretty penny in the long run. So yeah, we're going to keep these until we get ourselves nobles unlocked. Then we might just spend a little bit of those points on this track down here. Of course, we'll end up with some more anyway by that time. Um, eggs poached in a sauce for 200. Yes, please. We will have that. Thank you very much. Um, also then... If you wanted to put that on the list, let's have a look. Um, eggs, eggs poached in a sauce. We're going to need eggs and we're going to need hot spice. Oh my goodness. So tomatoes and greens, yes. So eggs and hot spice. Okay, right. We need to look at that. Also, I do think we need to go and get some more sausages. So we need eggs, hot spice and sausages. It's an unusual mix of things to go and buy. Also, I do notice that we now have a fertilizer kind of uh, resource just there. Um, what we need to do is, I think it might be worth putting a shelf outside. And so they can store fertilizer on the shelf outside and not put it inside. Let's just check that fertilizer is a thing that they actually do store. Because I don't want them to put fertilizer on the, um, on the inside. Because that's all a bit grim. Although it doesn't look like they do, actually. It doesn't look like they do. Fertilizer is not one of those things. Um, I mean, does it just live in there? Is that where they store it? Storage settings, fertilizer. Oh, it will just be stored in there. Oh, okay, that's marvellous. It gets stored in the composter. Oh, okay, well, there you go. That's no problem. Um, we might need a bit more money before we're going to order all these things. The eggs, the hot spice and the sausages, because that's going to be quite expensive. We haven't got a lot of money. Oh, my goodness, he is back. <laughs> oh, my word. Alstero's back. It's two fish Alstero. Wonderful. You've not been around for ages. Hello again, innkeeper. Be merry, for two fish al sterile has returned. Oh my goodness. Uh, I missed you. I did miss you because you're, you're fun. Bah. There's certainly no artistry by the way you speak, but a knight is born to help those in need, no matter how small or vile they may be. Oh. Okay. Relationship with Alstero weakens. Alstero reacts with disgust to most things you say. 
I thought we got on, Olstero. Okay, um, to what do I owe this visit? The knights from across all Delchris are rushing toward this land. The rumours talk about an impending war. I think it's happening, actually, Elstera. I think you've missed, the, you've missed the start of the war. I have returned to see if you need my help again. As long as, of course, that beautiful yet monstrous creature, Elisa Devon, no longer resides in your establishment. Um, okay, the Countess is gone, but there is a soul here who could certainly use the helping hand of a brave knight. There's a seer. Or oh, I already have a powerful ally. You are not needed here. Okay, I don't think I need to tell her about the seer. I think the seer would want to remain secret. So I'm just going to tell him to maybe just clear off. Because I got in trouble last time. When I introduced him to the counter, she got cross. The seer will do the same, I guess. So I already have a powerful ally. You are not needed here. Is that so? And who may that be? Okay. Uh, he, he looks like he's going to attack me. There's a certain seer staying here. A serious seer? Hmm. I think I should take my leave. Okay, uh, leaving so soon. As a general rule, I try to stay as far away from the seers as possible. Beautiful women, of course, every last one of them, but don't get me wrong, I have nothing against smart and educated women, no, no. But the way they use their knowledge does scare me. Okay, um, well, I hope we meet again soon, or do as you wish. I mean, he doesn't like me very much anyway. When I said, yay, I've missed you, he didn't like it. So, do as you wish. It's time for me to go. Farewell, innkeeper. Okay, so I, they're probably not going to help me again, are they? I imagine that might be the last time we see Two Fish Elstero. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. I like him. Um, right, let's see if we can run time on. Let's see if we can accrue a bit of money to then go and order those food items we need. Oh, is that Melan just standing out on the path? It is. Oh, hello, Melan. Why didn't you come in? Greetings, innkeeper. Um, okay, greetings, courier. We are watching you closely from far above the clouds. You and the storm that's forming around your inn... We've heard you managed to deal with the Countess Devon without the, need, the help of the couriers. However, I thought you might need our support now. Mayland closely studies your expression. I mean, it would be useful. You guys have got flying griffin creature monster things. So yeah, it would be very handy. Um, I welcome all the help I can get. There's already a seer helping me, or I already have a powerful ally. No, well, I welcome all the help I can get. That's exactly the problem. You're working with Calistair, is that true? Uh, how do you know that? Ha! <laughs> Let's just say the seers have their ways of learning Delchris' secrets, and we have ours. Um, okay, we could join forces. Yeah, why not? I'm, I'm quite happy to join forces, if that's what you want to do. We prefer to stay away from the affairs of the seers. I just wanted to warn you, do not let, do not let them manipulate you. The seers are powerful and wise, but like to shrug off the responsibility for their actions onto the shoulders of fate and the natural order, while they themselves try every day to forge and shape that very fate and order. Okay. Admit it, you've missed me. Thank you for your advice. I guess everyone has a right to their opinion. Or don't you dare speak like this about my allies. Um, thank you for your advice. You'll do what you deem right. Farewell, innkeeper. Ah, uh, good, right. So we've become a little bit more pally with her. That's quite good. She totally agrees with me. Okay. So now she's going to go as well. Are we losing all of our um? Are we losing all of our allies there? So because we're with the with the seer. We can only now work with the seer. We can't join these people together. Also, I kind of noticed that these have completely tumbled. These values here, we have 91% um, sort of uh, interest from these guys, the distressed. At some point, we did have townsfolk up to something like 17%, but now they're not interested. Now, apparently, in this version of the game, um, the decor and stuff has actually become quite important. So if we go to here and have a look at this... Apparently clicking the I does something or other. Um, although I can't find out what that does. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Somebody said, I think, there's a go into a room and click on the I. And they'll show you what kind of style it appeals to. Um, so yes, yeah, so what that room is appealing to townsfolk. Well, that's good, isn't it? That's what we want. We want more townsfolk in it because I think they're a better sort of uh, they're a better catch because they've probably got a bit more money. They're more likely to spend big. Um... Okay, I might have to go and check what that comment said, because I'm not entirely sure that I did that right. No, I think that is right. I think that's what they were referring to. So in the rooms list, you click on a room. The eye takes you to that room. So that'll take us to storage. That takes us to the main hall. And then we click in here and we can see what style this room is in. So at the moment, yeah, the main room is more styled toward the townsfolk, which is good. And that has crept up by 0.3 of a percent, a mighty 0.3 of a percent. Although I think they were quite high. So I don't know if either something has happened to bring them down or... 
when we reloaded the game, they got reset somehow. I do not know. But whatever the case, that's going to hopefully slowly creep up a bit more. Now, we are going to try and put more decor in. We obviously need more money. And yes, we still have not gone and ordered our essential food items because we need we need we need sausages. It's very important. Sausages form an integral part of the diet of this place. So um, yeah, we might have enough. So let's go and order uh, whatever it was: sausages, eggs, and hot spice. I will admit I do find the purchasing of items from these places a little bit fiddly because there's no sort of master list. It'd be lovely if there was one screen that said you want to buy eggs. Here are eggs and you can buy them from these different places. How would you like to go about this? Because at the moment, I mean, I've got the eggs ordered. We've got the eggs ordered and we have ourselves the sausage ordered. But I'm trying to find hot spice and I don't know where it is. And I'm trying to find it on the map. So it'd be lovely if you could filter those things down to only leave sort of certain types behind. Because who knows where hot spice is on this map? It could be, it could be anywhere. And there's, there's so many little sort of icons and things all over the place that I'm trying to find where it is. So yeah, this does get a little bit kind of fussy and fiddly. I would just like to be able to go, can I get some hot spice from anywhere that's on our sort of uh, trade network right now? No, I cannot. Okay, I will not put that on the menu. But yeah, at the moment, I'm just sort of, uh, just sort of trying to find where it might be and I can't see it anywhere. Okay, I'm fairly confident that we cannot order any hot spice from anywhere available. We just can't do it. It's not around. Maybe if we get the trade route with Ore sorted, maybe we could then order it from there. But I can't find it on the map anywhere. And I can't find it in any of the available places that we can reach to purchase. It's just not there. Unless, what's that? Is that hot spice? No, that's sunflower stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm fairly sure it's not that. It, it looks like that. It's a little bag like that, but it's got a kind of uh, sort of chili pepper thing on the side rather than a sunflower. But yeah, I can't find where that is. I don't know where that is. And um, and yeah, I maybe it's not available yet. Maybe it'll, you know, I don't know, turn up in a bit or something. I don't know. But we'll keep an eye out for it. That does mean that we can't have that thing on our menu though, which is a shame. So um, we might as well take it off for now because we can't serve it because we can't prepare it. So people might possibly order it and then get a bit grumpy that they can't have it. So, um, uh, oh, do you know what? It's not even on the menu. I didn't add it to the menu, which is perfect. So hurrah, there we go. <laughs> we don't even need to worry. Okay, some more soldiers that are coming by and they have got themselves 14 citrus. So to get this 14 citrus, they burgled the manor and murdered the entire family for 14 lemons. You guys are just, you guys are terrible, terrible people. Um, no, I'm going to tell them to go away. I do like it says, scold the soldier for making money. I do more than scold them. I'm absolutely doing more than that. That's horrible. That's a terrible thing to do. An entire family murdered so you can get some lemons. That's just all sorts of deranged. So no, we'll scold you. Um, there you go. Favour among nobles increases, although it doesn't because we haven't unlocked them yet, which is a little bit irritating. But more importantly, the fame rises. So we get a bit of fame. People know about us a bit more and we get another upgrade point as well. Um, money is looking a little bit a little bit sad right now and I'm noticing that we are running out of lager. We could do with topping up on lager a bit but I would like to get some more money in first because it's relatively expensive. We're okay for all the other drinks for now. It is lager that is the thing that's actually depleting the quickest. So okay we need to keep an eye on that. Hopefully we can get some good money in at some point soon. Okay, the lager is down to five. We need to get ourselves some more lager. So here we go. Let's go and order this. And this is kind of what I mean. This is what I find a little bit fiddly. So let's go to Sassy Sisters. We know we can buy stuff from there. So do they sell lager? No, they do not. They do sell liqueur. Oh, we could get that in if we had a bit of money. Right, Happy Farm. Do they sell lager? Um, no, they do not. Okay, Mr. Piggy. Do they sell lager? Yes, they do. And it's really expensive because it's 141. The average price is 62.5. So then we have to go to another place. It'd be nice if there was one master sheet. It said, what do you want to buy? You could say, I want to buy lager. And then it said, all right, lager at Mr. Piggy is this much. Lager at Sweet Meadow is that much. Because you kind of have to keep going through all these different places and remembering how much stuff is and all that kind of stuff. Just seems a little bit of a sort of a, a fiddly way round of doing it. But okay, it's fine. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good price, doesn't it? 67 the average is 62.5 okay so let's just have a little look round. oh that's even better so we might be buying the lager from the old bridge market but let's just check everywhere else 
It turns out Pluven has the best deals on lager. So let's just go through and grab, I don't know, 10 lots for 660. Do you know what? Let's get 15 lots for 940. Let's use some of these scrolls. So let's go, boom, there we go. We saved ourselves 94 monies. But do you know what? These scrolls are just sitting there and doing anything. So yes, we'll have that for 846 gold, please. Please send it over very quickly. Now we could, we could have gone for an express delivery, which cost an extra 100. I think we'll last until then. That's going to take a little while to get here, but I think we will be able to get by on the five lager. Maybe we'll tell them to try something else. I don't know. And all the lager has arrived and everything is well with the world. Look at that. That is a lot of lager right there. So yeah, we're going to go and pour it into some of these barrels and things over here just to make sure that we can supply people with lots of lovely, lovely lager for many, many months to come by the look of that. However, these are now getting a bit low as well. So the wine is getting not really low but it's a little bit lower than I would like and the cider is certainly coming down here's some more soldiers that have stolen some stuff they've they've dragged a composter so they've decided that the spoils of war is a composter uh no again uh, you raided a small town this is what you pillage not as bad as murdering a family for some lemons still you'd nick someone's composter which is entirely entirely uncalled for and also a bit weird <laughs> if you were looting a small town and you were looking around, you think you'd go for something of you know, intrinsic value, like, I don't know, paintings or artwork or whatever. Food, even. In a time of war, food could be quite precious. But no, <laughs> you decide to steal a composter and drag it across the country. Um, no, I don't want that. Inns fame rises. Townsfolk increases 10.1%. That is marvellous. Um, okay, have we got anything growing in these? Um, they should have fertilised them a bit. Oh, the soil quality is very good. Oh, onions have been planted. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, well, we should possibly water them then. Are onions planted in here? Um, are they in there? Yes, onions ready in 24 whatever's days, times, I don't know, 24 units of onion growing. Um, yeah, so we'll water them as well just to make sure that they're going to grow nicely because that does help us out. That saves us a little bit of money. It would be nice. I mean, the money is quite slow at coming in. It might be because we have a lot of staff, but money is relatively slow at coming in at the moment. I'd love to have a big pile of cash so we could go through and get ourselves lots of other stuff here set up, get ourselves lots of little plots. We can grow more things. But um, yeah, until we've got a fair bit of money, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Uh, let's go up and have a look over here. Is this thing still... How's this looking? 99%? Oh, well, we're almost done. Okay, well, we'll just wait for that thing to go up to 100% and then we can probably get ourselves a trade route with them. In fact, can we do it now? Can we do that now? Um, yes, we can. Okay, so we need... Ooh, ooh, that's expensive. Okay, 72 of those scrolls, which we don't have, or 1,800 monies, which we don't have. Okay, right, let's just go and um, wait for us to acquire... I'm going to guess we're getting the 1800 monies first. Um, but of course, as soon as we get to 1800, we don't just want to go and uh, spend it on that trade route because then we'll have no money left for wages or anything else. So, um, so yeah, let's let's wait until we've got, I don't know, maybe 3000 guldens and then we'll go and open up that trade route with Ore. Oh my goodness me, some more idiotic soldiers. The soldier says they massacred a whole village. And what do you get from massacring an entire village of innocent people? You get some milk. You, sir, are a terrible person. We shall scold you. Favour among the distressed increase. Um, I'm having a terrible time in getting over 3,000. It kind of, it peaks at about this. And I can't get it to go over 3,000. I've been waiting because I said, you know what? When we get to 3,000, we'll go and do the trade route thing. But, um, but no, I'm sort of sitting, just patiently waiting for that to top up. I mean, we are doing quite a good job of kicking the guards out. Look at that guy. <laughs> He's just sort of crawling out the door. That's it. That's it. You crawl away, my good sir. Cheerio now. Um... I'm wondering if... Oh, there we go. Right, we're over 3,000. Have we got a problem with, like, pots again? Have we got any clean mugs? Is that the issue? Oh. Oh, are we out of mugs again? Okay, right, hang on a minute. There should be someone specifically designated to doing this. There should be someone who is going to be doing the washing of the mugs. And you can take this. You can take them in there. Yeah, I don't want to store clean mugs in there. Let's not store clean mugs and clean plates in there. That's a terrible place. We want to store clean mugs and plates in there. Is there storage options? Yeah, there. So and we don't want dirty plates and dirty mugs in there because that's just silly. But yeah, if we ran out of mugs, 
Is that why nobody... Because maybe we're making money on food, but we're not able to make money on drink because we haven't got any mugs. Maybe that's the issue. It doesn't help that these guards keep taking our things away. <laughs> yeah, we've just punched him in the face and this one's been sorted out as well. But yeah, they keep trying to take our things. So that is some more dirty mugs. So I'm wondering if we haven't got any mugs. That might be the case. Also, who is this? Oh, you look amazing. Nameless. Oh, look at that. You're, I mean, you're absolutely sinister as anything, but you look very impressive. I mean, it looks like you're on fire right there. <laughs> Check that out. Okay. Are we able to get anybody a drink? That would be very, very good if we could. Okay, let's just have a quick look. How are we looking now for clean mugs? There. We have four clean mugs. Right, and dishwashy person. Oh, they've gone on a break. <laughs> Don't go on a break. There's mugs to take out of the dishwasher. Come on, everybody. We should have massive loads of mugs. That's what the whole thing runs on. We've not got... Have we got any clean plates? What is going on? Are the soldiers just nicking all of our crockery? Let's just get on with this, shall we? So we'll pay the 1,800 monies it requires to open up a new trade route with R8. That's quite good. They've got candles. We do kind of go through a few candles, so maybe we'll stock up if they're quite cheap. So, okay, 1,800. There we go. Moving the story on. We are a little bit low on wine. Great job, Owen's child. The trade route to R.A. is set, and the Merchant's Guild representative is on their way. Everything is going exactly as my vision shown. Just make sure that the Untamarkian soldiers are far away from the inn, otherwise the merchant may be too scared to approach us. Um, okay, how can I keep the soldiers away? Just send a warrior on a mission to keep their attention far from us. I hear you've come across some new information. Use it. Okay, thank you for your advice here. I'll see what I can do. Oh, this is taking too long. I'll see what I can do. It's fine. Um, okay, so let's have a look here. So, uh, connect your in. Yes, done. Another point. That's very good. End the war with Callister's help. This is excellent. We are moving this on. Okay, so we need to... Let's pause time a second. Um, yeah, I'm a bit confused as to about where we send the adventurers. Where do we send the adventurers? I mean, do, do they go to a village? It just sort of say, implies that we should know what to do with them. But I'm not entirely sure where I should be sending the adventurers. It's, oh yeah, you've got them. Just um, just, just use the adventurers, send them off somewhere to detract, you know, to distract the Untamarkians away from us. But how? How do I do that? Where where do I go? What do I click on? Do you know what? It'll be fine. They'll turn up to us, and it won't be an issue. And if it does become a problem, hopefully it will flag up on the actual quest log thing, and it'll help us out. Okay, another person. You can take whatever you like. Um, distress, favor increase, ins fame rises. I have just thought, what if I keep doing this, and they're taking all the mugs? What if that's what's happening? It's not the guards. It's the people that we're saying, yeah, come in, help yourself. And they're going, brilliant. Well, I need a new set of plates. Oh, lovely. Th these plates can be mine. Oh, thank you. It's so kind. Thank you. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe they're taking all of our crockery. So how much have we got now? We've got no clean plates and no clean mugs. We've got a lot of dirty mugs, but we have no clean mugs and no clean plates. And we've not even got that many plates. And we've not got very much money. And we've not got very much wine. We might need to possibly go out and take a bit of a loan out somewhere in order to keep things going for a little while. Because, yeah, that's not very helpful. Having no mugs and no plates is not very good for a tavern. I've just noticed this has opened up all sorts of things up here. So we've got ourselves a place called Trevenu. There's the Old Hag Drunette which sounds a very unappealing place to go to. The <laughs> the old womanizer. Okay, right. They're specifically marked on a map, are they? Right, you are. Butcher Bill, White Elk Mill, Velitin. Oh my goodness, there's all sorts of places. There's a place called Cricot, a goat farm, Resourceful Sue. It's good to know that she's doing okay. Up there is the Golden Cock. Okay, the owner of this farm is an exceptionally beautiful cock, feathers of which... Shine like gold. We'll just leave that there, shall we? Um, there's a fruit and vegetables market. Oh my goodness me, there's so much stuff. Right, can we go and get any of these nice things? Um, there's a painting. There's a thing there. Uh, what's that? Can we go and get that? Oh, we need to do relations with them. Okay, um, yeah, literally anything. Just, just put... I'll have... Uh, you guys, because I like the fact that we might get some traveller sort of folk in. 170 monies, three days, seven people coming in, but it will increase relations with them, and we can get that. That looks like a fancy bed. That looks like a fancy bed. I, I'd be quite happy with that. Um, can we take that thing from you? 
No. Can we take that thing from you? Yes, we can. A bearskin rug. And um, Bertram, why don't you go for a change? Bertram, go and pick up that. And then from here... Oh, what's that? A sort of weird cake-looking thing. That is some sort of tomato stew by the look of it. Um, can we go and get anything from anywhere else? Not from there, not from there, not from there. Okay, right. So we need to spend some more money on um, improving relations with lots of these places. However, we do need to go to the bank. Let's go to the loan of your veil. Let's take out a loan of something like... Oh, what do we want to do? Now, if we're going to decor the inn up a bit as well and try and get people in, why don't we take out a substantial loan? Let's take out... I don't know, seven and a half thousand. We should be all right to get that back. And I know I'm taking out a loan, but it means we can actually get on with stuff. So seven and a half thousand. Yes, please. We'll take that. Then we need to go and find ourselves some mugs and some plates. So let's see. There's so many places to buy from now. We could be here all day looking for mugs and plates. Um, so yeah, mugs there. Average price, 100. They are 89 just here. So that looks like a pretty good deal. Yes, they're quite good from to travel. Let's just go and check some other places for mugs and plates. It looks like the incredible farmers are best for mugs and plates. So we just order five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those. We will use some of those because that'll save us quite a bit of money. So we'll use a scroll to get 10% off. So it saves us 192 goldens, which is quite a lot. Yes, please. Can we have all of those things? And then we need to go and find ourselves some wine and some cider. It seems de Tral is pretty good for these. So the average price of wine is 81.2. Here in de Tral, it's 65. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so half with wine. And do you know what? In terms of cider, it's pretty good. So we'll fill that up like that. We'll use the scrolls again to save us a bit more money. Oh, apparently we'd used one already, had we? Okay, I didn't think we had, but right you are. So we'll spend a bit of money on that, which is marvellous. Okay, so now I've got a bit of money to spend on decor. Also, what I'd like to do is, over here, I'd like to get the staff room back in. Because we did have a staff room once upon a time, and I didn't know what to do with it. So we removed it because it was just sitting there, and we could sell it and get some money back. Um, but now, apparently, in the staff room, we should put beds I have been told in the comments that that would help. So what we're going to do is, let's do a little bit of building work, shall we? So, um, yeah, we'll get ourselves, is that a staff room? Yes. Okay. So I think if we just put it, say, here, it doesn't need to be very big. We don't need a massive staff room. So we'll have that there. Um, the walls, can we just make the walls entirely functional? I'd like them to be nice walls. Um, how about then we give them uh, green walls? Why not? Green is nice. So you can have oh, green walls, a little bit of green on the outside. That's fine. So green walls just there. Yay. They're going to need a door. Um, also, you know what? They can have a window out the back as well. That's fine. A couple of windows they can look outside. Um, a door. So our internal doors are all what colour? That sort of green colour, aren't they, for this? Green. Oh, it's green with, green with blue. Hang on. Hang on. What colour are the internal doors? I like to get this right. So it's... Um, it's that yes yeah, that one it's that one i'm fairly sure it's that one so then we'll put that just there can we put the door just there okay so we've got the staff room in and then into here oh do you know what the floor the floor needs a bit of work in here as well i don't really like the floor um the staff room floor can be a lovely whatever that is there we go that's quite nice oh that does look quite nice oh yeah that looks all right Marvellous. Okay, so we've got that in. And then in here, apparently, we're supposed to put in a bed. And apparently the staff can come in here and chill out on the bed. They can just sort of have a sleep and relax or whatever. So I'm intrigued. So we're just going to put this in here and just see if that actually holds true. Or if people are just having me on, <laughs> which might also be the case. And of course, they might want a, um, a bit of light in this room as well. So we'll just position that just... In fact, you know what? Let's put it against that wall, actually move it around like that look so we'll put it against that wall so hopefully we should see some people coming in to use that once it's constructed because at the moment there's a bed and a candlestick just sort of just sort of uh, amidst all this rubble and they've piled all the rubble on the lovely clean sheets of the bed that is not on builder folks okay so the room is in and yes look the staff are going in and having a little sleep 
Ah, okay, so maybe that's what we need to do. We need to put beds in for the staff. So I put in a, a sort of table and chairs in our last staff room, and they didn't like them. But I thought, yeah, the staff room would just be where they sit down, they have a little drink, they have a little, you know, you know, take the weight off their feet for a bit. But no, they actually have a bed. They go in and go to sleep. Okay, that's interesting. I hadn't realised that that was a thing. Um, and I imagine that gets their sort of strength back up and what have you. Okay, uh, well, for now, let's just pop in one more bed into here for now. We can always come and rejig this and stuff. Um, we'll just put that there. In fact, can we get, how about... Can we get three of these beds in? One there and one there for now. Move the candle so it's... Uh, move it round so we can put it against that wall for the moment. So it can sit just there. Move that bed up and that bed there. The only thing is, I don't know if they can use that bed. I'm not entirely sure they can make use of that bed if it's like that. Because they can't get in. Because they always get in from the same side of the bed for some obscure reason. Let's put it there anyway and just see if that does work. If it doesn't, we'll move it. If it does, then marvellous. Um, also, let's get another table and chairs in as well. I notice all our crockery has arrived, so hopefully people can now start having nice things. Um, have we got any clean mugs or anything? No. And yeah, I do notice nobody's drinking or eating anything. Look, nothing is happening. So I assume, yeah, we did run out of mugs and plates, which is a bit silly, really, but never mind. Right, um, we'll put the table just there. And let's get ourselves the nice chairs that the uh, the townsfolk like. Yep, there we go. Right, swivel that round. One, two, three. And swivel that round. One, two, three. Okay, good. Um, and let's have a look then. What else in terms of decor can we put in that the townsfolk are going to like? Yeah, this sort of stuff. A wooden shield? No, they don't like that. What's the bother about that? Um, okay, so let's have a look through. What do the townsfolk like to see in their pub? None of the decor items appeal to the townsfolk. None at all? Okay. I mean, these things here, the banners and stuff, do have a style. But that is obviously applying to... That's the Yorvale, I don't know, sort of emblem. Uh, Sambrias is that one, and Untamark is that one. So they've got their own sort of unique style. But nothing else appeals to the townsfolk that we've got right now. That's disappointing. That's very disappointing. Okay, never mind. And what we could do is we could do something with the flooring again. We want to go back to that blue flooring that we've got, which, is it that one? Is that what it is? Oh, no, that's absolutely awful. Um, is it that one? Where's that blue flooring that we've got? The, oh, it's up here. Look, there we go. It's that one. So let's sort the flooring out in here as well, just whilst we're here. Well, we've got a bit of money to spend. We'll keep a bit of that money behind as well. So there we go. For now, we'll just put that as blue. So it looks kind of nice. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. There's nothing that those people like. I mean, do they like the counters? Untermarket counters? Your Veil counters? I mean, I do like the Your Veil counters. How are they as opposed to a nice counter? Which is what we've got. It's fast, but it's messy. How about this? The Your Veil counter is very fast. It's fancy. And it's durable. And it gets messy. Ah, Oh my goodness, it is massive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, wow. That thing is, that thing is huge. Um, okay, can we fit one of them in? I mean, ideally you'd want it to go that way, but it's so utterly gargantuan that that's not going to fit. I would like one for two and a half thousand. Oh, I hadn't noticed how much, mo how much they were. Yeah, we can't really afford one of those right now. <laughs> that's, that's very expensive. Um, do you know what? Let's just move time on. We've ordered the... Um, have we ordered wine and cider? Yes, we have. Okay, let's just move time on. Let's see what's going on here. So yes, we need to accommodate the guild representative. Uh, wherever they might be, I do not know. And it's worth pointing out that this person here has been able to get into this bed in the corner. So they can get into the beds from either side. So that is worth knowing. And indeed, now we do have plates and mugs, the money is coming in quite rapidly. So yeah, it just must have been because our mugs and plates were dirty. We couldn't wash them fast enough, even though we have one staff member who is designated to just do, uh, do the dishes. That's their one job. Their one job is to wash up. Um, a group of suspicious individuals walks into your inn. You notice that beneath their coats and rags, they are hiding armour. One of them sees your look and tells you to mind your own business. Another one asks if you'd like your business to be doing business with them. We get a round shield three. It costs 127 guldens. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that they are suspicious. 
Um, let's do the servanty thing, and then not your concern. And then, yeah, this happens. We don't get any money for this, but okay, there we go. Cheerio. Yeah, I don't want to buy anything dodgy off people because, again, this war thing going on, it could have been taken from someone completely innocent. You know, it could have been involved. In, a murder could have happened to get that shield thing. They were trying to sell me for a pittance, which just sort of feels morally not good. Now, this is weird. These two guys have come out here and they've started to work on the um, on the patches here, on the vegetable patches. And now I only have an option of water. Now, what I did see was that the little plant option was still there. They said, hey, you need to put some plants down. So even though when we went into here and it said planted onion ready in 24, I don't think that was entirely true. I think we had to tell them again to put onions back into that for them to then replant the onions. Because now the option to plant is not there and the option to fertilise is not there, just the option to water. So yeah, I think that went a little bit strange there as well. But never mind, these are all things that we you know, we learn from. We now know that when you get stuff out of these uh, little sort of vegetable plots, they don't then replant the same things. We have to instruct them again to plant the same thing back in, which is fine. And now we know that, we can do that every time. Look at this, all the training dummies are in use at the same time. So we've just got these four soldiers just attacking these dummies <laughs> with the same lack of any kind of urgency and vigour that they're all sharing. Look at it, come on, just put your backs into it a little bit. It just looks so sort of lazy. <laughs> but there we go. So at least they're in use. I don't think they're kicking down our fence quite as much. The money is pouring in. Now we have lots and lots of pots and pans and things. The money is coming in. Great guns, which is marvellous. So at some point, we will be able to pay back. Oh, <laughs> just as I was mentioning my fence, you've knocked it down. You scoundrel. Okay, right. So someone's coming and ruined the fence. Now they're stealing some stuff as well. Do you know what, actually? Let's keep an eye on you. What are you called? Ghulam. Because you're nicking, what's that, flour? Possibly? You're nicking some flour. Hopefully, one of our security guards will come and punch you in the head. Oh no, you're going out this way. Well, that's just cheating. I might put a fence around the edge, you know. I might put a fence around the edge to stop them doing that. So if they do take something from here, they have to walk all the way back through the main sort of uh, body of the tavern. And then one of the security guys is likely to get them and pop them on the nose and get our goods back. Because that's just rubbish. They just come in here and nick stuff and go out the side door and leave. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's somewhat unfortunate, isn't it? Um, I don't know where the representative is. I don't know where this person is. The guild's representative has not arrived yet. So what we'll do is we'll pause it for now because we have done quite well. Uh, we've got ourselves back up to 13.9% um, favour with the townsfolk, which is pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, it's still, we're still quite popular with the uh, with the distressed, but I guess at the moment, because the war is raging, there's going to be a lot of them. And each time we do one of those things where they come asking for help, more often than not, it's to do with them, isn't it? It gets us favour with the distress. So yeah, that's likely to be higher at the moment. Maybe we start seeing these things increase once the war ends and there's less distressed people around. I don't know. We've got the green staff room in. That's quite good. So we know that is a thing. We can then work on that and build that up a little bit. But yeah, at least that's in. At least they can have a break and get their strength back and what have you. And um, and yeah, I think it's just ticking over quite nicely now. We've got ourselves some more tables. The flooring's a bit different. It could do with a clean again, but never mind. We'll get all this done. And of course, we're growing our own onions again, which is marvellous. And more importantly, we've opened up all these trade route things up here. We've got all these places to go to. We can go and grab lots of recipes, lots of items, all that kind of stuff. And we shall do all of that next time out because we shall finish up for the moment. If you're enjoying this, please do leave a like. That would be very, very good indeed. And also, if you're not already, please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Crossroads Inn. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. She's still heartbroken. <laughs> She's still sick. Oh, Colleen, you're, it, this is not your day, is it? Sean Bozzini is going to defecate. How's the lounge looking? <laughs> Do you like the plants? I left them there, especially for you guys. <laughs> is there some sort of terrible apocalypse which I need to know about? He's just defecated in a bush. <laughs>